Hello everyone and welcome to another video. My name is Lance and today the warp chair has once again brought us to the alpha version of Central Yarnum. Now Central Yarnum is a big place so for today we're just going to go for a quick jog through the streets and head towards the Great Bridge, which is typically the first primary destination of any Bloodborne player. So we first pass under the bridge here, and to our left, as this is the alpha version, we immediately find an item that was later cut from the game. This is the foul-smelling pill, which is a fairly simple healing item. It restores a small amount of health over time, and also gives the player character a pleasant glow while it does its thing. So heading just a little past the Great Bridge now, we can explore this plaza, and usually we'd find a Yarnum resident behind this door who would taunt the player a little, but they're not present in the alpha. To the left we'd usually find a shortcut to the aqueduct here, but the developers have thrown a small barrier here to prevent us accessing that area in the short term. Don't worry, we'll explore that area in the future, but for now let's head down into the plaza and take a look at my favourite detail that was cut from the final game which is this absolutely beautiful shadow. A glance at the skyline shows us that it's this amygdala's tentacles casting a shadow from that illuminated building. I always wondered why that building was lit up in the final game, and we can see that it's likely because it was once used to cast these amazing shadows across so much of Yarnum. Now strangely, under certain conditions, two abhorrent citizens can spawn in this plaza. It's not entirely clear on what might have been originally intended to trigger this, maybe different moon phases or time of day conditions, but either way, this is not something that we encounter in the final game. Continuing further along, not too much has changed in this immediate area. We get an oil urn from this corpse. Heading back in the opposite direction to where Gascoigne's family lives, we can see that their window was totally absent in this point in early development. Once again, we'll explore that side of Yarnum in the future. For now, we'll head up towards the Great Bridge. I really do appreciate the placement of that amygdala the way it can be seen from pretty much any location once you get to this side of the bridge. Once we're actually on the bridge, we see something that actually gave me a fright the first time I arrived, and it is a friendly NPC version of Father Gascoigne. Now in the final game, we do get an early opportunity to summon a phantom version of Father Gascoigne around this point of the game, so I'd say that he's been placed here just as an early concept of that. He'll head off to fight some werewolves. In the meantime, we'll head to the left to see something fairly interesting. Once again, under certain unclear circumstances, a Chime Maiden will actually appear here.
There's nothing too particularly interesting about her, except uh, that I feel she's far more aggressive than the ones in the final game. However, if we take manual control of her, we can see she has an attack that was removed from the final game. This interesting looking AoE attack deals a lot of damage and also drains the player's stamina bar extremely quickly. Another interesting anomaly is that we'll encounter a Wandering Madness here, although it drops some unspectacular items. There's also a grate placed here to prevent access to the sewers where we'd normally find one of the game's earliest armor sets. Returning up to the Great Bridge and Gascoigne is still fighting those werewolves. The Dark Residence is here, but we saw that in the previous video. And this small gap that usually lets us drop down and head towards the aqueduct has once again been blocked by some rudimentary fencing. Continuing on our way, we come to the iconic location at the end of the Great Bridge where we'll meet the Cleric Beast. It's quite interesting to see such a familiar area with the alpha version's dramatically different lighting and time of day. The Cleric Beast fight is basically the same as what we encounter in the final game, although we'll see the Fog Gates have these phantom messengers all over them, just like we saw in the earliest Project Beast trailer. The door behind the Cleric Beast simply reads, does not open from this side, unfortunately. So I know this has been a fairly short video, but I do want to focus closely on each area in the Alpha just to show you even the smallest details that we didn't see in the final game. I'm going to end this video with a small treat though. We'll do a bit of a flyover of the bridge, while you hear for the first time a complete and uninterrupted cut of the fantastic cut alpha version of the Cleric Beast's theme music. I'll also be uploading an unedited cut to this channel too, um, as well as more uninterrupted cut music in the future. So as always, if you enjoy this type of content, um, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a friendly comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Either way, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh...